It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. I'm joined by Matthew. How are you doing, Matthew? Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we are at Glen Affleck Brewery and Tap Room today, brewing a collaboration goza. But while we're on a, we're, we're on the mash rest, so we're going to get in and do a brewery tour with Matthew. Yeah. So, um, Matthew, first of all, you're the head brewer. Yeah. How long have you been here? Uh, about 16 months now. 16 yeah, months. Yeah. Been head brewer for about um, six, seven months. Brilliant. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> and you're brewing. You've got a you've got a few kind of stable beers that you brew it, and then you've got a lot of different beers you brew in every month. Yeah, so we've got about we've got five beers in our core range. We've got a couple more in our sort of extended, but um, on site at the moment we probably have about forty beers. Um, a big selection on draft, but in cans as well, and we're just rotating those and loads of new ones all the time. Fantastic, fantastic. Let's let's have a look. Yeah. So while we walk, uh, the first beer that I had for you guys was the Morrison Beer Festival. Yeah, you did back in October. Yeah, and Highland I believe Suntan. it was a yeah Highland Suntan. And that was a lovely. To be honest, that was a that was a lovely pale ale. Yeah, so that um, was um, quite, well, that's basically number one. That's what our, we call like our flagship beer. We've been brewing that since the early days, since we had a fifty litre brew yeah. box. <laughs> brought that all the way through and uh, yeah we scaled up in size we'll go around and have a look shortly but when we scaled we needed uh, so we had more beer more demand and the uh, yeah, Morrison's took that one up it's been really good for us actually so before we get right into the detail just, uh -huh. just be very vague with this if you need to but um, the story goes you started in China yeah so our, well we're here in our Merseyside site um, our owners are Scottish they moved down to Merseyside about 20 years ago and then through their work, travelled all around the world okay. and spent a lot of time in China as well as here in Scotland. And yeah, one of our owners, uh, Craig, when they were living in China, got more interested in the beer scene over there and ended up working for a brewery over in China. And part of their work, they travelled all around the world and they went to see different brewing cultures, China, America. Mm. And when they came back to Merseyside, they were a little bit not particularly impressed to have on the beer scene. Yeah. And um, when they decided to sort of wind up uh, working all around the world and relocate back here, they decided to take on the challenge of mm. creating a brewery that was up to the standard they were seeing elsewhere around the world. And, and hence, why we have a tap room on site. Exactly. Because if you, when you travel around um, a lot of parts of America, um, around the world, it's, it's important to sell the beer locally yes. right on site and there's no better place to drink beer than than, than on site i haven't got to travel anywhere i have got to travel it's fresh they, when we package in we go straight from the tank into yeah. the package into the tap room so and, and it also in. it creates interest with the with the local community yeah they go there's a brewery with a tap room and back they start trying different beers exactly mm. yeah yeah too much interest initially too much demand which is why we scale up capacity brilliant loads and loads of beer being sold very quickly um but yeah all good stuff definitely Fantastic. So we're going to start the tour in the tap room. Yeah. There's some pale ale, sours, IPAs, New England IPAs, session IPAs, wheat beers, dark beers, lagers, red beers, shandy. There's some fantastic styles of beer here. So here's the taps. We've yeah. got some merch here if you want to come and visit and buy the merch. We've got some tables. Do you serve, do you serve a bit of food? Um, yeah, can you have a meal? Or? We went through a phase of um, getting various people in. Um, we had quite a long stint with a Thai restaurant, bringing food in for customers. We're actually looking yeah. at that again, various different places. Nice to rotate people around and have a bit of a difference going. You've got the space out there to do some street food type thing. Yeah, we've actually, we've actually got licensing for outdoor seating when it does get a bit warmer. Um, we have people outside, we've had food trucks outside as well. So yeah. I think we're Brilliant. Okay, so this is, this is where, if you were to come to the brewery, this is what you probably, you would see. Uh, when, when is this open? Open Thursday through Sunday, so yeah, four days a week at the moment, um, in the evenings, and we'll be open at one on the weekends as well, um, and we do tours on Sundays. Fantastic, yeah. Okay, Let's, I'll hand it over to you now with the, with the technical stuff. Yeah, well, I would say, say we've got 30 taps on site. Um, all of that is our own stuff. Um, we try and keep it stocked up as much as possible, we're taking new beers on all the time, and then we have our fridges here as well. So there'll be stuff in here that you won't necessarily see on the tap room, um, on the draft, I should say. And um, some of these will be exclusive, so we'll have them here. And we do obviously try and sell out to external places as much as possible. But when we're low on stock, we want to make sure people that make the trip can have the beer. Also got our soft drinks. Um, oh, cool. So we do uh, a big range of soft drinks, 
So we've got uh, sugar free, low sugar. We have some seltzers as well that we're doing. And then we've got the CBD drinks as well. So that's something that we're working on quite a lot at the moment, CBD soft drinks as well as uh, we've got our core range with CBD as well. Okay. Okay. Well, and then yeah, through here is our production space. Oh, we've got some barrel aging going on. Yeah. Yeah, so this is some stuff we'll probably have a little bit of a taste of later. Um, but this is sort of our, one of our main focuses at the moment. Um, about, well, just over a year ago, we started to um, put beers into barrels and we're starting to slowly take them out now. So this is a selection of what we've got at the moment and it should, but we're starting to bring them out for public sale as of this week. So beers between sort of nine to 15 months are starting to make their way to the uh, wild at the Wow, okay. Can um, we go look at that in a bit more detail over the room? Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll probably best to start on start the five pet kit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll show you there. So this is obviously where you'll be brewing the, the brew today with, uh, with the German Thomas. Yeah. This is basically the start of our brewery um, on our Merseyside site for a commercial uh, side. Five pet kit, um, very you know quite small, quite compact, but very um, very efficient and works very well for our needs. Um, three vessel brew house, hot liquor tank, mash tun, under back kettle. Um, the, where the kit gets particularly interesting is sort of from our fermenter, fermenters onwards. So it is quite small, but it does have some more of the technical side of stuff that we appreciate in the brewery. Process. So you have one, two, three, four. We've got four fermenters. Four fermenters. Yeah. Um, everything we do is all under CO2 um, control. So we ferment with spunding valves, not something you necessarily see in all the brew houses around the area. Um, we have a little hot rocket, quite a small little neat one that we can cool. do additions for. And okay. this is so we can basically replicate the big brews on the small kit if we're doing pilots. So if we are going to be using a hot rocket on the big one, it's nice to use it on the small kit as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything's still under CO2, um, including additions, transfers. So we've got four tanks, we've got two, uh, four fermenters, two bright tanks. Yeah. So uh, beer is transferred here when it's completed, when it's passed all of our QA tests, and then we carbonate it to spec inside these vessels and package oh, cool. into kegs and cans. Um, so this was basically the first kit. The initial idea for the site was to this to be basically a tap room and a brew kit and we would make beer on this scale and we sell it to the bar, we sell it to local areas as well. Um, but it very quickly reached the point where all of this was being drunk in the tap room. Wow. Uh, wow. And we couldn't have, we didn't have any beer to spare. And we did get a little bit of reputation with some local uh, pubs as being sort of the brewery with no beer because we just had no spare beer. Yeah. Um, but, demand. Yeah. yeah, well it's a good and a bad thing. Once demand gets too high and we can't uh, reach it, that's a problem. So that's where we decided um, a couple of years ago to scale up. Right. Um, so we are still operating two brew houses here at Ben Affric, um, five heck and our 30 heck kit. And that's the 30 heck is where the, the bulk of our production happens. This is really for pilot brews and let's say more experimental things as well at the moment. Um, main scale of production is on our 30 heck plant. Um, so you can see very quickly, <coughs> um, if, you, if you want to come down, you can see the this is the scale of the, the, the growth of this brewery, mm -hmm. is you see the shape of this vessel, fermenter, then you turn around and have a look at the scale of, of these fermenters, you can, you can see the growth in this brewery, and that's fantastic to see, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, and they say these are actually small vessels compared to what we've got next door as well, so oh, yeah, so growing and growing all the time. And we'll go have a look at the brew house and you can see exactly uh, what we're talking about with this big okay. So this is this 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 is the service. Oh yeah. So yeah. So yeah, this is our thirty pet brew house. This um, came online um, basically at the end of twenty. Uh, 18. So the first beer that we really saw from this kit was start of 2019. So we've been running on a scale that has allowed us to produce enough beer for general sale for about 13, 14 months. So not not too long really. 
Um, and this is basically designed by the same people who made the small kit, and it's the same style of brew house, it's just scaled up. So um, when we've gone across to making the same sort of beer, it's being scaled, it's been very uh, beneficial for that. Um, obviously, it's six times the size, yeah. but the brew length, is, well, the timing is pretty much the same. So when we are producing the beer, it takes you know, the same amount of time, but we get a lot higher quantity yeah. so it's uh, really been able to scale up and meet our demand um, because the initial idea it's quite interesting when you look around the initial idea was to have our five hep brew house yeah and a tap room um, that was put front and center um, now when we decided to scale up the, the, the space was either side so we have a yeah. brew house in the middle of a brew house. Yeah, yeah. The way we are operating at the moment, it's, so you're it is a little bit funny. Liquor over. Yes. Yeah. So, so the, the work goes across all the way to the fermenters over there. Yeah. Yeah. Hook, hook it up on the transfer. Goes all the way over. All the way over. Yeah. And is this some kind of hop addition uh, piece here at the end? If you want the right hops, or no, this is for this is our mash tun here. So we've got hot liquor tank, mash tun, right. on the back kettle. Uh, so this is a hydrator. So this is Right, of course. Right, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is where I'm not a brewer, see? <laughs> the the, the molten stuff going in, into this. Not, the, not, not some kind of hop rocket or whatever. Uh, well, it's, um, so it's, it's a very uh, manual kit. As you can see, valves, everything's hand operated. It's yep. nice to have the you know, connection with the equipment and be able to move everything around manually. Um, you, know, you, see, you are seeing a lot of automation coming into breweries and they are very efficient but can be quite dull for the brewers, so it's quite nice to be very, have a very manual hands-on approach. Yeah, yeah, and even to the point where if you get the camera down here, you can see, you can see that you can dig the mash down there. Okay. See the hole in the corner there we're showing you? So the shovel goes in there, you're digging the mash out, and it's all a, a good labour intensive. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to go to the gym after work, you just need to go over there and refresh yourself with a beer. Yeah, well, we, we, it is good fun actually. Yeah, we do um, we do days where members of the public can come in and brew with us. Yep. Um, and that's a very manual, hands-on thing to be in you know, connection with the kit. So we have members of the public come in, have them all digging out the match turn as well. Yeah, it's good fun. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, we'll Great. go across and look at some of the fermenters and see uh, what connects yeah. to this kit. Do you want to go back down? Just very quickly, if, uh, Mr. Cameraman, Mr. Cameraman's the brewer today. Um, if you want to just pop. Pop yourself over there one second, and if you wanted to do a pan, just a pan of get the pie and do a pan of the whole brewery. Fantastic to be able to sit and have a beer mm -hmm. whilst the brewers are brewing. Does that happen? Yeah, occasionally. So we're open Thursday through Sunday. So we're generally brewing Tuesday through Friday. So if you are on Thursday, you might see the, the tail end of the brew. Sometimes if we're in peak periods, we will be here quite late brewing, doing double brews. So yeah, quite commonly Brilliant. we'll be here. Get all the yeah. sounds and the smells of the brew house. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. So these are the uh, fermenters and bright tanks for the 30 hep kit. You might see we're immediately in like a, a corridor of much bigger tanks. A beer um, cathedral. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is, well, well we, when we, when the big kit came operational, um, say November, December um, 2018, we basically had four fermenters, yep. two bright tanks, yep. and then a 30 hex size, then we had a 60 hex fermenter and a 60 hex bright tank. Um, so obviously the four and the two mirror the five hex kit. Just, just for somebody who's getting into brewing, they're watching this video for the first time, they might be scratching their head with a few of the more technical terms. Bright tank, what, what, what does a bright tank do? The so bright tank is for finished beer. Right. Um, basically, when we're producing the beer, if you imagine you put your ingredients in, yeah. you've got your yeast, you've also got your wort, you will be then be adding maybe hops or other adjuncts, and they're, like, they're mixing around in the tank. 
as we get as we get to the phase where the beer is pretty much finished, we're encouraging the beer to settle down to right. the base. So and that, what we want that, to that's do. the reason of, for, for this. Yes. So these are cylindrical fermenters. They're a cylinder with a cone at the bottom. Yeah. And the trub, like the um, the stuff we don't want, will sink. Yeah. When the beer is done, we will extract the nice clear beer from the top. Right. And that allows us to go into here. And that's beer that's finished. We would call bright. Um, and that allows this tank to become empty and we can then brew into it. Right. So it's maximizing efficiency. Okay. These aren't uni tanks that we would then package out of. And it comes across into here when it passes QA, so we, you know we know our ABV spec, we can test the colour, the bitterness, um, and pH, and then we go through to here and we can carbonate to the level that we would like as well. And that allows that phase to be completed and this tank to be refilled. Um, so let's say we had four, we had two to mirror the small kit. So what we're doing is scaling the recipes. Same amount of time to brew, same amount of time to ferment. We just get a lot more beer. Yeah. And we had the double. So for our more popular beers, we could um, we could do two brews and get six thousand liters. Right. Um, when we had the small kit and we had issues because we didn't have enough beer, we then quickly went to a brewery with no beer to brew with a lot of beer quite quickly. So we uh, brought on more staff, um, more, uh, sales team, uh, to sell the beer not only locally but hopefully nationwide. Yeah. And uh, we then quickly became a brewery with no beer again, but now on a bigger scale. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so we were producing, say, four lots of 3,000 brews, one lots of six, and when we're trying to produce a loads of different uh, brands with those different beers, we couldn't quite hit the demand on them just for turnover time. So that's um, linked up towards the tail end of last year, we scaled again. So this is a new fermenter that's only been in for a few months. Yeah. Uh, and we see we have a, a 9,000 litre bright tank. Wow. So this is the triple brews. Um, that actually corresponds with the tanks next door. Okay. So we can go and have a look. More, more fermenters. So this is Tank Farm 2. So this was installed um, towards the tail end of last year. And this was to, well, firstly counteract our initial problems where we didn't have enough beer um, to accommodate our own demands. And then it's scale that will, should see us through um, the next few years, hopefully. Um, but obviously we then had tanks in place to, that were plumbed in, had the electrics, had the glycol, and they were just sitting here taking up space. So yeah, towards the end of last year, we did look at um, bringing in some contract brews. Yeah. And uh, minus these four tanks here, in December, every single tank produced. Um, we had a very, very high turnover, not only of our own stock, but a few other places we were brewing for as well. Yep. Um, so yeah, we went in basically 12 months from a five heck kit with a uh, 3,000 litre capacity to uh, nearly 100,000 litres in tanks. Yeah, space. it's amazing and, and it's explosive growth and, and it's even like, like I live down in Cardiff in South Wales as you all know we're up in Liverpool here um, it's just about 300 miles between us so one day I'm in my local Morrison's as you do um, walking around my trolley I go down the beer aisle every, every time I go into Morrison's and I see that they've got this festival on Glen Averick Brewery, Highland Centre. I got to have that. Looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, you, you've probably seen the review of the Highland Centre, but that was my first. Was it Glen Averick Brewery? Never. But that's the that's the explosive growth, isn't it? What you were talking about. You've hit the supermarkets. Yeah. And yeah, you're, you're selling great beer. So mm -hmm. the future's the future's great. I mean, you're gonna have to build another yeah. uh, another building over there to carry on putting your fermenters in it. Yeah, potentially, it's growing. I mean, at the moment, this is, well, we're filling it with some of the contract brews, but there will be a point, hopefully, where there's all our beer it's circulating all the time, you know? yeah, um, yeah. And fingers crossed, we're not too far away from that. Um, as I say, minus these tanks, these four here, we were all four last year. So yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there uh, very, very quickly. So yeah, quite a lot of changes going on all the time, but that's all good stuff. So is that the, uh, is that the future of the, of the company then, where you go into a Morrison's or a Tesco and, and you see your general kind of three pound, that's the 2020 prices, if you're watching them 10 years in the future, you're probably thinking three pound for a pint. But yeah, three pound for a can of beer is, is 2020 prices. Is that the future of this company, to, to, to get them into the supermarket shelves? Yeah, potentially. I mean, 
the way we're growing, we're going down multiple different avenues. We have quite a few opportunities. It's just about picking the right ones. Yes. Obviously, yes. Wh whatever you choose and wherever you choose to sell your beer, that you will see connotations on that. Obviously, picking one avenue for market eliminates people from buying your beer potentially. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to be sensible. Um, we're very happy to work with Morrison's. We think they're a very good company, and yes. we're happy to work with them. Um, there is other supermarkets. Potentially, we would work with in the future. Maybe not. Um, but obviously, we're open to all sorts of them. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, we say we do stuff with Beer 52, uh, we do stuff with Beer Hub, we, we have quite big numbers going out there. Yeah. Um, it's just about making the right decisions for us. Yeah. Great, <laughs> great. Uh, so, the end, of, the very end of this brewery tour, I forgot to ask. So, your, would you say it's pale ales and IPAs that, that, that you're your biggest sellers at the moment or stouts, porters? Um, at the moment, we, yeah, pails I think at the moment, we obviously do quite a big range. Um, we have had talks with people coming in with distributors and they say most breweries do a thing and we market them as the brewery that makes X, mm. um, but we make more beer in a couple of months than some breweries make in 10 years in terms of styles. Um, so I think what people are finding from us at the moment is um, hopefully good, consistent, um, traditional styles like our IPAs and our lagers. Um, we did very well at the World Beer Awards and for our styles as well. Yep. Um, but we're also doing experimenting and doing slightly unusual beers. So we say Biff to just uh, took some of our pale ale, our cream soda pale ale, as well as our hazelnut, vanilla and chocolate porter. And they're that very popular good. because they're a bit more unusual. That sounds good. And we sell quite a lot of the more experimental stuff as well, which is quite nice. Uh, I'm very uh, well. I, I suppose this is the end of the tour now, so I've got one more thing for you before we start with some beer reviews. So look for the beer reviews of Glenavery. I'm going to be setting myself in up in really quirky places around the brewery doing doing beer reviews of Glenavery's beers. But my last question to, to you, Matthew, is: We're brewing a collaboration today of Four Fruit Goza yeah. with passion fruit, cherry. Blackcurrant and Black raspberry. Blackcurrant and raspberry, there we go, thank you for reminding me. That's why he's the head brewer. And um, where can people find it? Um, well, we'll be on our online store initially. Well, um, we'll probably launch it in the tap room. Yep. On our online store, so members of the public can go online and we do like two day delivery anywhere in the UK. Okay. So you can buy cans of that. If you're in trade and you're looking, we'll be, um, we'll be going on Ebria. Um, and say so just uh, contact the brewery for any more information on that. Sales team will always be eager to get the beer out in as much avenues as possible. Thank you very much, my yeah, dude. High you. five! Thanks. Let's go and drink some beer. Simon, one more thing. Come on, get this. <clears throat> oh, oh my god, that high five was a little premature. Look at this. So yeah, this Fantastic. is our uh, our barrel aging program. Uh, it said on the when we were walking around earlier, aging stuff between um, eight to fifteen months at the moment is coming out into the market. Um, and yeah, this is where we're aging it. So this is our other warehouse. Um, we have at the moment 350 barrels. Wow. Um, we're not quite sure, but we were we were had some breweries here to do a collab, and they they told us we were like they, they think we have the biggest collection of barrels for our brewery in the UK at the moment, which I'm not quite sure about. I'd say so. <coughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna back that up. Um, the last time I seen a and this is for my viewers who've been watching a long time. The last time I seen this many barrels in a brewery, some of you might remember my collaboration with Brewery the Dr. Van der Coroner in Belgium where we did the blend. This is as many barrels as, as I've seen, and that was in Belgium. This is, I would say, yeah, definitely the biggest collection of barrels I've seen in the UK. Mm -hmm. So 350, about 150 have been filled. We're starting to, to deplete that, those filled barrels. Yeah. And uh, we actually work with a blenders. Um, so all of these barrels have come from a blenders. They will be different um, vintages. So we have scotch, bourbon, rum, and uh, sherry. Mm. <clears throat> and they'll be so completely different vintages. So we have stuff dating back like 40 year scotches from the 70s, oh. um, all the way through to some more recent things, different varieties. So um, we are making several different beers. We've got, um, say, Imperial Stout, um, Belgian Double, mm. Barley Wine, Kranekun Red Ale, um, Milk Stout, Baltic Porter, and they're all going into different styles of barrel obviously yeah. even even when we're putting them in scotch there, there might be 15 different varieties of scotch there so there's a lot of uh, new 
interesting things coming out as well and um, it won't all be the same so we are packaging them differently different it, vintages different styles i'm just looking at the badge of the brewery on the um as you're talking mm -hmm. and it all fits together nicely yeah. Glen africa it feels very scottish you've got mm -hmm. the, the the deer there and, and of course we're, we all know scotch scotch whiskies and stuff so it all feels like th this this is this is a, a part of your future but um can we try some later on absolutely yeah so we've got some over the road ready to go we have some that we're packaging yeah. or we'll have packaged Ooh. and we're releasing over the next five weeks um as sort of our spring barrel age launch um so we'll try some in the cans we'll try some straight from the wood as well see what it takes like yes. so um, i'm really excited but um one last thing before we definitely go this time um is that we, we don't have smell of vision here on with the, with the camera but just describe the the smells in here it's a mixture of for me woods and and, and whiskies and and vanilla and, and stout and you can really smell it in here it is very potent i think i'm getting a bit i'm getting used to it now i'm in here pretty much every day but uh yeah yeah it is very strong we say about 100 and, well, about 120 in here f filled at the moment mm. uh, as well as the rest of them yeah very strong oak wood vanilla as well as the uh you know the beer smells hopefully not leaching in and out too much but definitely an impactful spirit smell definitely do you have um, one of these barrels later on where you know you go to these Belgian places and they pull a nail out and they fill a glass and yeah. they put the nail back in and it's oh it's just so authentic that's exactly what we've got over the road so yeah, we'll yeah. Look at those okay we did the high five we won't do it again uh, thank you for the surprise oh you're welcome